Rock Yahoo. So we say, Laila too, good evening to our YouTube family who is going to listen to this teaching later on. Uh, Laila too to you, worldwide, wherever your feet are touching the soil. Good evening to the elder Ak, Yahuda. Good evening to the younger Ak, Aphraim. Good evening to the former stranger, the former Gur, the former Goyim, the former Gentile the former foreigner, the former nation who is no longer a Gentile or foreigner or stranger or nation or Gur or Goyim, but having received the Ruach of adoption, the Ruach HaKadush, the Ruach of Yahusha HaMashiach, and whereby now being engrafted into the house of Yasha'al, and whereby now being a fellow partaker of the same everlasting covenant and promise and inheritance, that was given to Yasha all and to Yasha all alone. Good evening to you, Laila too. Wherever your feet touch the soil on this on this night, Laila too to you, to the elder Ak Yahuda, to the younger Ak Aphraim, to the former stranger, the former Gentile, the former nation who is now engrafted into us. Welcome to our midweek gathering. Uh, we welcome you. You are Welcome to join with us. You're going to actually hear this later on, but you are welcome to join with us and our Zoom family. Uh, if you have been watching this channel at any link, you will notice now that my Aisha, which is to say my wife, is sitting next to me. Uh, and that is because she will be reading for me uh, because my eyes have dimmed to a point to where I can no longer see well enough to read. However, Yahuwah has promised me that he is going to heal my eyes so that the nations will believe and so that his name is esteemed amongst them. Until then, I will continue to be proven trustworthy. I will continue to speak what he tells me to speak. I will continue to do the work in the vineyard. However, until he heals me, my Aisha I will be reading for me. Uh, she would be reading from the words that our Yahuwah has spoken to me. They are not her words. They are Yahuwah's words spoken through me to her. And for those of you out there who may be a super brew or who may be hypercritical, uh, she is reading uh, who, who will say that a woman should be silent in the assembly. Well, she is reading because her husband told her to read and she is obedient to her husband. Barak Yahuwah. And so we have been uh, walking a journey searching for the ancient path. Uh, in most of those teachings, that's, that has actually been the title of the teachings, searching for the ancient path. Uh, before uh, I was called away for an appointed time, uh, we continued on searching for the ancient path, part 22. We are not going to continue part 23 tonight. Uh, Yahuwah willing, we're going to continue part 23 on the Shabbat day. Nonetheless, this teaching, while not entitled Searching for the Ancient Path, is regarding the ancient path. And it is uh, a important message uh, to the house of Yashar'al. It is a very important message to the house of Yashar'al because Yahuwah is displeased with the divide and the division within his house. We are supposed to be, as the sister read earlier, one body, which translates into being what? One assembly. There has always been one assembly, one assembly of Yashar'al. And so before the Hamashiach ascended into Shamayim, his prayer, I believe it was John the 17th chapter, is that his people would be Akkad, that we would be one as his father and he are one. This is not the case. We're, uh, we're not teaching the same things. We're not doing the same things. Uh, we're not acting the same way. And this is not pleasing unto Yahuwah. This is not pleasing unto him. And so in ushering in that oneness, Abba has sent me by to address an issue uh, in which there is still a divide within the house of Yashar'al. There is still a divide. Some agree that it's okay and some disagree. Some agree that it, that it is okay and some 
disagree. But if you are taking notes to my YouTube family, uh, my Zoom family has already written the title down. If you were taking notes, the title of this teaching is Should Yahuwah's People Celebrate Birthdays? Colon, all things according to Torah. Should Yahuwah's covenant people celebrate birthdays? And as we spoke earlier, the operative word is covenant people. If you aspire to walk in covenant with Yahuwah, then this teaching is for you. If you are not in covenant with Yahuwah, in other words, you're not guarding his commandments with all of your heart, mind, and strength, then this teaching is not for you. But if you aspire to walk in covenant with Yahuwah all yom, then this teaching is for you. Again, the title of this teaching is, Should Yahuwah's Covenant People Celebrate Birthdays? Colon, all things according to Torah. All things according to to Torah. With that said, uh, we're going to read line upon line, precept upon precept, and Yahuwah, not his servant, is going to establish if whether or not his covenant people should indeed be celebrating birthdays. And he is going to uncover, he is going to uncover a nefarious plan. He's going to, uh, he's going to uncover some deception this night. And we are going to know this night via the voice of the Ruach HaKadosh if whether or not Yahuwah approves of his covenant people celebrating birthdays. With that said, Asha can you give us the first precept? Yes, sir. Leviticus 18, 1, 4. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the children of Yasharel and say to them, I am Yahuwah your Allahim. Do not do as they do in the land of Matraim where you dwelt, and do not do as they do in the land of Kanian where I am bringing you, and do not walk in their laws. Do my right rulings and guard my laws to walk in them. I am Yahuwah. I, I am Yahuwah your Allahim. So this is the Torah that has been read. And in the Torah, we are commanded not to do what they do in the land of Egypt. Or in other words, Mashraim. And we are not to do what they do in the land of Canaan. We are not to walk in accordance with their laws. We are to walk in accordance with the laws and statutes and commandments and right rulings of Yahuwah our Allahim. We are to follow his Torah, his Torah, and his Torah alone. We're not to do what the nations do. We're not to do what they do in Egypt. And I have news for you. In accordance with Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 68th verse, we are back in Egypt again. We are back in Masraim again. Yes, we are. We are here. Egypt indeed is a representation of bondage of crime we have been sent back into bondage we have been sent back into the captivity of the nations and so we are back in bondage we are back in slavery we are back in egypt again and here in the land of our captivity back in egypt again we have been commanded via the torah to not do what they do in Egypt and not walk according to their laws and not walk according to their laws. And so the question here, the question now is, is it, is it okay within the confines of Torah to celebrate birthdays or is it a transgression of Torah to celebrate birthdays? Because this is truly what it's about. It's, it's, it's only about Torah. It's only about righteousness. And righteousness is what? It's obedience to Torah. It's about righteousness and self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is unrighteousness. Unrighteousness and self-righteousness has nothing to do with Torah. Self-righteousness is trying to establish one own righteousness outside of the confines of Torah. That is unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is lawlessness. Unrighteousness is is Torahlessness. And so it boils down to that. 
It boils down to righteousness and unrighteousness, righteousness and self-righteousness. This is what it boils down to. There is no in between. Either it is righteous behavior or it is unrighteous behavior. So that is the question. Is celebrating birthday righteous behavior? And if it isn't righteous behavior, then it is unrighteous behavior. In other words, if it isn't in Torah to celebrate birthdays for Yahuwah's covenant people to celebrate birthdays, then it is unrighteousness. It is self-righteousness. I don't care how you want to honor your 90-year-old father by giving him a birthday cake. I don't care how you want to honor your 100-year-old grandmother with a birthday cake. If it is not in Torah to do so, it is self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is unrighteousness. Give us another precept, little one. Genesis 40, 20, and 22. Barak Yahuwah. And so now we're going to read an account here. And this account is where we first hear the mention of celebrating birthdays. Sure, Genesis is Torah. Genesis is Torah. But as we are going to see, the one celebrating the birthday is not his covenant people. I pray we can all agree that the Torah was only given to his covenant people. It wasn't given to the Gentiles. It wasn't given to the nations. You see, when the Gentiles and the nations obey Torah, guess what? They are no longer Gentiles or nations. They are fellow citizens of Yahshua'al. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So Torah wasn't given to them. It was not. It was given to Yahshua'al. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And so now we're getting ready to read an account of where we first hear the mention of birthdays. Indeed, Genesis is Torah. Barashit is Torah. But these, what we're going to read here, are not Yahuwah's covenant people. Read. And on the third day, Parah's birthday, it came to be that he made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief cupbearer to his post of cupbearer again. And he placed the cup in Parav's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Yahusuf had interpreted to them. Barak Yahuwah. So the first place we hear of birthdays is where? In Egypt. Now, in Leviticus 18, it is, it is declared, don't do what they do in Egypt. Don't do what they do in Egypt. And don't do what they do in Canaan. And don't walk according to their laws. Obey my laws, statutes, and commandments. And so the first place here we see the mention of birthday is in the land of Egypt. Masraim, Para, Pharaoh, celebrating a birthday. And I pray we can agree that this was not a righteous man. No, he was not a righteous man. He worshiped the sun. Oh, yes, he did. He worshiped the sun and the host of the heavens. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And as Abba is going to show us tonight, this is why he was celebrating a birthday. Because he worships the host of the Shamayim, the sun and the moon and the stars. Yes, he was. Come on, give me another precept. Matthew 14, 6 and 10. Uh-huh. But as Herodes' birthday was being held. Herodes. Herodes. Now, if you are even... You don't even have to be a student of this text to know that the Herodians were what? They were Adumi. They were Edomites. Edom ain't never been known to be righteous. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. And neither has his descendants. This was a wicked man. This was an unrighteous man, another unrighteous man now, mentioned in scripture, celebrating a birthday. Come on, read, little one. The daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herodias. So he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. And she, being urged on by her mother, said, Give me here the head of Yahukanin, the immerser on a dish. And the sovereign was sad. But because of the oaths and the guests, he commanded it to be given and sent and beheaded Yahukanin in prison. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the two accounts here... Uh, where birthdays are celebrated, they're celebrated by heathen. They're celebrated by the nations of those of whom we have been told not to do as they do. 
not to do if they do. And in both accounts, two heads were lifted, one by hanging, one by beheading. One by beheading. This ought to be enough to stop this, but no, I was going to dig deep tonight. He's going to dig deep. And he's going to show that they were celebrating birthdays because they were sun worshippers. They worshipped the host of heaven, the host of Shamayim. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. What we got next, little one? Ayub 1, 1 and 5. Ayub, go ahead. There was a man in the land of Oops, whose name was Ayub, and that man was perfect and straight, and one who feared Elohim and turned aside from evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him, and his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large body of servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east. And his sons went and had a feast in the house of each on his day, and sent and invited their sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it came to be when the days of feasting had gone round that Iu would send and set them apart. And he would rise early in the morning and offer ascending offerings, the number of them all. For Iu said, it might be that my sons have sinned and cursed Elohim in their hearts. This Iu always did. Barak Yahuwah. Now here at Iu, it says that his sons each had a celebration, a feast on his day. Now, it doesn't say that it was a birthday, but it's safe to assume that it was a birthday because Ayub lived where? He lived in the land of the east. He lived in the land of the east where what? Where birthday celebrations originated. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. It says that he was more righteous than, than all the men of the east. But his sons weren't. They were not righteous. Thus, after their celebrations... He slaughtered, he slaughtered unto Yahuwah and prayed for them so that they would not be consumed, so that they would not be consumed. And so here in these three precepts, we see the celebration of birthdays only being celebrated amongst heathen, only being celebrated amongst Gentiles in which we have been commanded to not do as they do. That's Torah. That's Torah. We, we don't have to go any further than that. Torah tells us to not do as they do. And so if Torah, if you can't find the celebrating of birthdays in Torah, yet the Gentiles are celebrating them, then that should be enough to alert you to not do as they do. Because Torah tells us not to. Torah tells us not to. So then why is it? Why is it? This should cause us to question. Why is it then that the mention of birthdays that we see in scripture uh, is only mentioned, only mentioned in association with not only death, but with Gentiles, with heathen, with the nations. Why is it only mentioned in association with them? Let's begin to uncover this. Barak Yahuwah. What we got, little one? Barak Yahuwah. Yashar 8, 1 and 3. Yashar 8, 1 and 3. Let's read. And it was in the night that Abram was born. In the night that Abram was born. Uh-huh. That all the servants of Tarak. All the servants of Tarak. Uh-huh. And all the wise men of Nimrod. Oh, Nimrod. all the wise men of Nimrod. Now, what I need you to understand that these wise men were wizards. Yes, they were. They were sorcerers. They were astronomers. Yes, they were. They were, as we're getting, to, getting ready to read, they were magi. They were magicians. Now, we understand that Abram was born where? He was born in ur Kazdin. He was born in Babylon. He was born in the land of the east where, where birthday celebration originated. This is where it originated. Start over. Start at verse 1 again. Let him hear it. And it was in the night that Abram was born. That Abram was born. 
Come on. That all the servants of Tarak. That all the servants of Tarak. And all the wise men of Namru. And all the sorcerers and the magicians of Namru. And his conjurers. And his conjurers. Came and ate and drank. Came and ate and drank. In celebrating the, his birthday. In Come the on. house of Tarak. In the house of Tarak. And they rejoiced with him on that night. And they rejoiced. And when all the wise men and conjurers went out from the house of Tarak. Mm -hmm. They lifted up their eyes toward oh, heaven. Oh, wait a minute. Why they lift up their eyes towards the heaven? Because birthday celebration is all about the worship of the heavenly host. Yes, it is. I was going to prove it. Yes, it is. It's all about the worship of the heavenly host. Do you think that that was by coincidence that they went outside and looked up? No. Come on, read, little one. They lifted up their eyes toward heaven that uh -huh. night to look at the stars. Uh -huh. And they saw and behold one very large star uh -huh. came from the east and ran in the heavens. Mm -hmm. And he swallowed up the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. Uh -huh. And all the wise men of the king and his conjurers were astonished uh -huh. at the sight. Uh -huh. And the sages understood this matter uh -huh. and they knew its import. Yeah, of course they did. Of course they did. Because they were magi. They were sorcerers. They were magicians. And this is what the celebration of birthdays is all about. It's all about uh, the worship of the heavenly host of the stars and the moon and the sun and how they impact a person's life on the day of their birth and how they impact a person's life throughout their life. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Come on, give them another precept. They don't believe me. Okay, we have Matthew 2, uh -huh. 1 and 2. Yes. And Yahushua having been born and by evil. Oh, and Yahushua haven't been born. Another birthday. Say it ain't so. Who was found there looking for him? In Baif Lakam mm -hmm. of Yehuda in the days of Herodes the sovereign. Mm -hmm. See Magi. Oh, magicians. See, this is the Greek word Magi, which means magician. These were the same type of magicians that we just read about in Joshua chapter, chapter 8. They were astronomers. They were magicians. Who uh, who were used to reading the stars and 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 the the movement of the sun and the moon and 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 they would uh, gauge these things at the time of a person's birth to determine how the stars and the moon and the sun were going to impact uh, what they said about a person's life and how uh, his and and how they were going to impact that person's life throughout his life. This is what it's all about. And as we're going to understand, as I was going to show us that the stars are not merely stars. When we're talking about impacting somebody's life, it's not a mere star that's impacting somebody's life. You see, they knew that. They knew that. I'm getting ahead of myself, but they knew that the stars are messengers. They knew that. I was going to prove it precept by precept, line by line, precept by precept. He's going to prove it. But this is an ancient Babylonian practice. And it is based upon the worship of the heavenly host. Come on, keep reading. See, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. From the east. Where was Job from? From the land of the east. Yes, he was. He was from the land of the east, just like these men. Come on, read. Saying, where is he who has been born sovereign of the Yahudim? Uh -huh. For we saw his star. In Whoa, the east. for we saw his star. For we saw his star. Birthday worship is all about the worship of the heavenly host. Yes, it is. I was going to uncover this and prove it. And erase the deception one and, once and for all. Barak Yahuwah. Keep reading. For we saw his star in the east. And he came to do reverence to him. Mm -hmm. Now you have the Strong's definition of. Go ahead and read the Strong's definition of Magi. Okay, Strong's number G3097. Uh huh. Translated word Magos. Uh huh. Magos. Uh -huh. Magos. Uh huh. Strong's definition: a magician. A magician. You can stop right there. Okay. A magician. They were magicians. You know, in a nice, you know, Christmas manger. You know, scenes of these three wise men, you know, bearing gifts. And they, they didn't actually see the Hamashiach till he was around two years old. So we know that's false anyway. All of it's false. But they were magicians. They were magicians following the stars, worshiping the host of Shamayim, and seeing as how they were going to impact the Hamashiach's life. Mm. 
Come on, little one. Give me something. Get, what, what, what's next? Yeah, your own personal notes. Barack Yahoo. What did I say? <laughs> because birthday celebration. Exactly. Because birthday celebration is the worship of the heavenly host. Is an ancient Babylonian observance. It's an ancient Babylonian observance. Based upon divination. Based upon divination. Abraham was born in Ur Chaldi. Yes, he was. In Babylon. Mm -hmm. It is based upon the position of the sun and stars uh -huh. at the moment of a person's birth. At the moment of a person's birth. Celebrating birthdays is based upon divination and magic. And it is based upon the position of the sun and the stars at the time of a person's birth and based upon its position those who are those who are observing it uh determine how the heavenly hosts are going to impact that person's life yes they do yes they do i think i got something from wikipedia next right you have the rest of I need to finish that if you want me to. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It is the highest day on a Satanist calendar. It is the highest day on a Satanist calendar. We're going to talk about that some more. But it, it is the highest day on a Satanist calendar for a reason. Why? Because they worship Lucifer. Lucifer is worshipped as the sun, the morning star. Yes, they worship the heavenly host. They understand witches, understand Satanists, understand astronomy, astrology. They understand the movement of the stars and of the sun and of the, and of the moon. And thus, their birthday is the highest day on their calendar. Because on that day, it is determined how the heavenly hosts are going to impact their lives. Keep reading. Birthdays are also highly revered by witches. Yes. Moreover, consider that they celebrate the birthday of Namrud. Mm -hmm. Every December Every 25th. December 25th. You see, if you're a Christian listening to this, um, and this is part of the deception. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're going to talk about this deception. We're going to talk about this deception uh, further down below. But uh, but since she read that, let me just give you, give you a little foretaste. You see, if you said to a person on Christmas Day, come on and... Let's go and celebrate the birthday of the sun. Most people would look at you like you're crazy. But see, if you wrap that thing up and make it look nice and pretty and make it not resemble what it actually is, which is the birthday of the unconquered sun, soul invictus, and package it up and tell them that it is, that it is the birthday of the Messiah. It is the birthday of the pagan Messiah whose name is Jesus. Every, pag every pagan sun god on this flat plane flat flat earth was born on December 25th. It is the birthday of the unconquered sun. But if you tell people, come on, let's go worship the unconquered sun on December 25th, most people will look at you like you're crazy. They will look at you like you're crazy. But, you, but if you package it up and make it look beautiful so as to deceive which Hashatan has done. He's deceived the whole world. They will worship the unconquered sun, soul invictus, the birthday of the sun on December 25th without conscience. Without conscience. And so here, again, this is why December 25th is a high day on a witch's and Satanist calendar. It's still about birthday worship, but it is the birthday of the sun. It is the birthday of Nimrod. Who is a representation of Hashatan? They are worshiping Hashatan. They are celebrating his birthday. And, uh, and if anyone is born on December 25th, it is based upon the position of the sun on December 25th and how Hashatan is going to impact that person's life. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. What's next? You're talking about horoscopes? Come on, read that. This is from Wikipedia. This is something... That I uh, that I copied and pasted from Wikipedia before my eyes grew dim. But but you, th there's no excuse to walk in ignorance. No excuse with with just an, and I'm going to sound intelligent here for just a second with with a cursory review. With a in other words, with, with with not much effort, you can uncover the deception and the paganism of celebrating birthdays, even from Wikipedia. Come on, read it to him. Read a little loud. Okay. 
A horoscope is an astrological chart or diagram representing the position of the sun, moon, planets, astrological aspects and sensitive angles at the time of an event, such as the moment of a person's birth. Uh -huh. The word horoscope is derived from the Greek word hora uh -huh. and scopes meaning time. Mm -hmm. Other commonly used names for horoscopes are a natal chart, astrological chart, astro chart, celestial map, sky map, star chart, cosmogram, vitosphere, radical chart, radix, chart wheel, or simply chart. It is used as a method of divination. What? Divination? Just like the magicians were at Abram's birth and just like those magicians were searching the stars for the Mashiach. Keep reading. Regarding events relating to the point in time it represents. Uh-huh. Events and times. Go Read that again. Regarding events relating to the point in time it represents. It represents. Keep reading. And it forms the basis of the horoscopic traditions mm -hmm. of astrology. Okay. In common usage, horoscope often refers to an astrologer's interpretation usually based on a system of solar sun sign astrology. Oh, solar sun sign astrology. Keep reading. Based strictly on the position of the sun uh -huh. at the time of birth. At the time of a person's birth. Oh, it's all about the worship of the heavenly host. This is what it's all about. What it's truly all about is deception and deceiving you, deceiving us to do what? To worship the heavenly hosts. This is what it's all about. Again, if you tell someone, come on, let's go celebrate the birthday of the sun on Christmas Day. Most of them would look at you like you're crazy. But if you package that thing nice and pretty so as to deceive and to cause them to worship the heavenly host by deception, you're still worshiping the heavenly host. No matter how much lipstick you slap on that pig, it's still a pig. It's still a pig. And you're still worshiping the heavenly host, which is the name of the game. Via deception or via outright. Like witches and Satanists, they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And they laugh at us when we're celebrating birthdays and celebrating Christmas. They laugh at us because they know what it means. They know that it is the worship of the heavenly host. Come on. Or on the calendar, significance of an event as in Chinese astrology. In particular, many newspapers and magazines carry predictive columns based on celestial influences in relation to the zodiac placement of the sun on the month of birth, cusp two days before or after any particular sign and overlap, or the month divided into three 10-day periods of the person's month of birth, identifying the individual sun sign or star sign based on the tropical zodiac Barak Yahuwah. so it's all about uh the worship of the heavenly host and how the stars and the moon and the sun impact a person's life what position are they at and based on that position that they're at how are they going to impact that person's life, not only on his or her day of birth, but throughout their life? This is what it's about. This is what it's about. It's about the worship of the heavenly host uh, in which uh, Hashatan has deceived the whole world into doing. Again, if you tell someone, come on, let's go and uh, worship the sun on the first day of the week in which they call Sunday. Let's go worship Tammuz. Most of them will argue with you and will tell you that you're out of your mind. But when you package that thing up to look nice and pretty and, 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 you, and you introduce and intertwine in that earthly pleasures so as to deceive and to make it pretty, then you got the masses. You, you, you've deceived the masses into worship the, worshiping the heavenly host, which is the name of the game. If you tell them, come on, let's go and worship Ishtar or Easter or Yostre on Easter Sunday. And, and let's go celebrate the resurrection of her son, Tammuz, who was a sun god. 
If you tell them that, they're going to rebuke you, reject you, argue with you, be angry with you, and tell you that you're out of your mind. But if you package that thing nice and pretty and say that this is the resurrection day of the Hamashiach, and by the way, that's self-righteousness because he never told us to celebrate his, uh, his, his death or his resurrection. He never told us to. He never told us to. That's self-righteousness. That's not in the Torah. That's not in the Torah. We must do all things in accordance with Torah. All things according to Torah. Because we're not doing things according to Torah. This is how the deception has entered the earth. Read, little one. You have a quote from the Satanic um, Bible. Read, read the quote from the Satanic Bible. Atan LaVey. Antoine LaVey. The highest birthdays are the highest of all holidays in the Satanic religion it is the date of one's own birth. The, say, the date of one owns birth. The day, and we've Abba has already established why. They know why. Because it is for them the worship of Hashatan, who is worshipped as the sun. But ultimately, it is the worship of the heavenly host, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and how they impact a person's life at birth. And how they impact, based upon that position and their movement, how they're going to impact that person's life throughout their life. You see, the Greeks have been doing this for thousands of years. When we look at Greek mythology, you know, they call them the gods. But we know that the gods are merely fallen messengers. They're either fallen messengers or they are demons. They are Nephilim, the disembodied, the disembodied spirits of Nephilim called demons. This is what the so-called gods are. And so they have, they have had the belief in every major society on earth has had this belief in uh, whatever God, so-called God, they worship that uh, they somehow have an impact on the lives of people and how their lives turn out and um, how, their, uh, how their, 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 their lives are going to play out throughout their lives. This is the worship of the heavenly hosts. This is the worship of the heavenly host that's in every society on earth. Read, little one. Okay, we have Dabarim 4, 15, and 19. Oh, now here is the Torah. Here's the Torah. We read Leviticus 18. Now let's read some more Torah. Leviticus, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy 4, 15, and 19. Deuteronomy 4, 15 through 19. Read, little one. Therefore, diligently guard yourself. Therefore, diligently guard yourself. For you saw no form when Yahuwah spoke to you at Horeb. For you saw no form when Yahuwah spoke to you at Karab. Mm -hmm. Out of the midst of the fire. Out of the midst of the fire. Least you should do corruptly. Least you should do corruptly. And shall make for yourself a carved image. And shall make for yourself a carved image. In the form of any figure. In the form of any figure. The likeness of male or female. The likeness of male or female. The likeness of any beast. The likeness of any beast. That is on the earth. That is on the earth. Or the likeness of any winged bird. Or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the heavens. That flies in the heavens. The likeness of any creature. The likeness of any creature that creeps on the ground. That creeps on the ground. Or the likeness of any fish. Or the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth. That is in the water under the earth. And least you lift up your eyes. Listen to the heavens. Hold on. <laughs> Listen. Least you lift up your eyes to the heavens. Read. And shall see the sun. And shall see the sun. And the moon. And the moon. And the stars. And the stars. All the hosts of the heavens. All the hosts of the heavens. And you be drawn. And you be drawn. Now we're going to take a look at this word drawn. We're going to look at the Abari. We're going to look at the Abari. You see, this is what it's all about. Everything in this fallen world. This is why we're told not to do what they do in Egypt. Everything in this fallen world. They said the sound, some Sister Rakia just texted and said the sound went out. The sound. Keep going. Can you? Oh, can you? Everything okay. in this fallen world. Uh, hold on, uh, my YouTube family, while we uh, take care of a discrepancy uh, with our Zoom video. So go ahead and end that. Uh, not end it, but um, uh, lead the the meeting and then come back in. Okay. Barak Yahoo. So hold tight with us, my YouTube family. Uh, the sound went out 
um, via the, the Zoom uh, video conferencing. And so we're going to have to log back in uh, so that we can um, get some sound. So go to, you know how to go to the message down there and click back on the link, the top link. And come in with audio. Are we in? It's the Wi-Fi. It's the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Okay, we need to continue this teaching. We need to continue this teaching. Uh, let them know in the chat room that we're having difficulty with the Wi-Fi, but that this will be on YouTube. Uh, we'll continue. We'll continue to try to get in here periodically, uh, but it's it's going to be uploaded to YouTube. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. Are we still recording? Yes. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah, what was that? The Wi-Fi must have just came back up. So maybe try it again because something was sent. An email was sent. Uh, so maybe try it again. Barack Yahuwah. Bear with us, YouTube family, please, uh, as we try to bring our Zoom family back uh, for the conclusion of this very important teaching. Barack Yahuwah. I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything. Did you go back and click on the link? Mm-hmm. Rock it, hold it. Okay, let's 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 complete the teaching. Barack Yahuwah. Where we at? Deuteronomy what? Just one second. Barack Yahuwah. Deuteronomy 4, 15 and 19. Barak Yahuwah, read again. <clears throat> Therefore, diligently guard yourself. Therefore, diligently guard yourself. For you saw no form when Yahuwah spoke to you. For at you saw no form. Karab, mm -hmm. out of the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. Least you should do corruptly mm -hmm. and shall make for yourself a carved image mm -hmm. in the form of any figure. Mm -hmm. The likeness of male or female. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Mm -hmm. Or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the heavens. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any creature that creeps on the ground. Mm -hmm. Or the likeness of any fish that is in the water. Water mm -hmm. under the earth, mm -hmm. and least you lift up your eyes to the heavens. Least you lift up your eyes to the heavens, and shall see the sun, and shall see the sun, and the moon, and the moon, and the stars, and the stars, and all the hosts of heaven, and all the hosts of heaven, and you be drawn, and you be drawn away in bowing down to them, away in bowing down to them, and serving them, and serving them, and serving them, and so this is Torah, this is Torah that we are not to be drawn away. And to lift up our eyes to look at the host of Shamayim, to look at the host of Shamayim and bow down to them and worship them. This is Torah and this is the nature of the deception that has us celebrating birthdays and which Abba has shown us is the worship of the heavenly host. Now, as previously spoken, if you tell someone, come on, let's go and celebrate uh, Sol Invictus, the unconquered son, 
his birthday on December 25th, most people will look at you like you're crazy. But if you package it up, but if you package it up so as to deceive, this is the name of the game. Again, the name of the game is to what? It's to transgress Torah. This is the name of the game, to transgress Torah. And they are seeking to cause us to transgress Torah by any means necessary. By any means necessary via deception or any way that they can get us to transgress Torah. And indeed, this is their main weapon is deception. Deceiving us to worship the heavenly host, whereby transgressing Torah. Now, let's look at that word drone, little one. Let's look at the Abba E. Nadak. Nadak. What does it mean? Strong number H5080. Mm-hmm. A primitive root to mm -hmm. push off, mm -hmm. used in a great variety of, mm -hmm. literally and figuratively, mm -hmm. to strike, mm -hmm. inflict. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Did I hear mislead? Mislead, yes. Mislead. Barak Yahuwah. What does mislead mean? To lead in a wrong direction mm -hmm. or into a mistaken action mm -hmm. or believe often by deliberate deceit. 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 So, so the text there is actually saying, least you be deceived into worshiping the heavenly host. The name of the game is deception, is deceiving us into worshiping the heavenly host, which to this point they have been successful at doing. But he has sent his servant by tonight to break the deception, to tear down standing stones, and to open the eyes of his people to whomever has eyes to see and ears to hear to the deception of celebrating birthdays, to the deception of the adversary and getting us to worship the heavenly host, whereby transgressing Torah. Read, little one. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was thrown out that serpent of old mm -hmm. called the devil mm -hmm. and Satan, mm -hmm. who leads all the world astray. Who leads all the world astray. He planeo. Is yes. that planeo? Yes. This, this, this is the Greek word planeo. The, the Greek word for astray, which is deceive. Is planeo. Planeo, which sounds what? A lot like planets, because planets is derived from planeo. We know and understand that there is no such thing as planets. Planets are actually stars. Planets are actually messengers. Yes, indeed, it is the messengers. It is the stars that are leading the world astray into worshiping them, into worshiping the heavenly host and wrapping it up in nice, beautiful packages, whereby deceiving the masses into worshiping them. This is the name of the game. Keep reading. The definition of plano to cause to wonder, to wonder, lead astray, deceive. Lead astray, deceive. To cause to wonder. To cause to wonder. This is all about deception. Wondering stars, the host of Shamayim, deceiving the masses to worship them as opposed to worshiping Yahuwah. As opposed to worshiping Yahuwah. This is what birthday celebration is all about. Keep reading. Revelation 12, 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. And another sign was seen in the heaven mm -hmm. and see a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head and his tail drawn a third of the stars of a the heaven. A third of the stars of heaven. A third of the stars. His tail drew a third of the stars, a third of the fallen messengers that rebelled with him. Indeed. It's already been spoken that stars are fallen messengers. These are the hosts of Shamayim who were deceiving the nations into worshiping them by any means necessary. Birthday celebration, wrapping it up in a nice fine package because birthday celebrations are fun. Oh, you get to get presents. You get to get money. You get to eat food and you, uh, uh, you, get, to, uh, you get to drink plenty of wine and liquor and have a good time. Not understanding that you are worshiping the heavenly host. Read. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Barak Yahuwah. So the stars, the stars that are aligned, that, 
Uh, are they back? Yeah, I think they Who, Who's that? Uh, welcome, welcome back, Miss Parker. This kept going. Whatever you miss, you'll be able to get via YouTube. We just, we just kept this going. Barack Yahua. Barack Yahua. And so, uh, the the stars, what you mix? Read, read Revelation twelve again. Can someone mute your mic, please? Please mute your mic. Okay. And another sign was seen in the heaven, and see a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Actually, so that so that they hear this, let's go up a scripture. Let's go up before that one. Let's talk about Baneo. They y'all forgive me on YouTube, but I, I want I want uh, the Zoom family to get this so that they get the context of what we're talking about. Okay. Deuteronomy 4, 15, 19. Okay. Therefore, diligently guard yourself. Therefore, diligently guard yourself. For you saw no form when Yahuwah spoke to you. For you saw no form when Yahuwah spoke to you. At Karah. At Karah. Out of the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. Least you should do corruptly mm -hmm. and shall make for yourself a carved image mm -hmm. in the form of any figure. Mm -hmm. The likeness of male or female. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Mm -hmm. Or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the heavens. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any creature that creeps on the ground. Mm -hmm. Or the likeness of any fish that is in the water mm -hmm. under the earth. Mm -hmm. And least you lift up your eyes to the heavens. At least you lift up your eyes to the heavens. And see the sun. And see the sun. And the moon and the stars. And the moon and the stars. All the hosts of the heavens. All the hosts of the heavens. And you be drawn. And you be drawn. Nadak. Nadak. This is the the Hebrew word Nadak. We're going to talk about this. Away into bowing down to them. Drawn away into bowing down to them. Serving them. Serving them. With Yahuwah your Elohim. With Yahuwah your Elohim. Has allotted to all the peoples. Has allotted to all the peoples. Under the heavens. Under the heavens. Let's let's look at that word. What is it? Nadak. Nadak. Let's look at it. Read. Hebrew 5080. Uh -huh. A primitive root to push off. Uh -huh. Used in a great variety. Uh -huh. Literally and figuratively. Figuratively, uh -huh. figuratively uh -huh. mislead, strike, mislead, inflict. mislead, and so the accurate, the the, the the accurate understanding of this text is uh, he is warning us against lifting our eyes to the sun and the moon and the stars, lest least we be misled into worshiping them and serving them and bowing down to them. Misled. What does mislead mean, little one? <clears throat> mislead to lead in the wrong direction or into a mistaken action or belief mm -hmm. often by deliberate de deliberate deceit deliberate deceit and so the name of the game is deception is deception the name of the game is deception into the name of the game is to deceive us into worshiping the heavenly host and whereby transgressing torah by any means necessary and so birthdays is a nice pretty package and wish to deceive the masses into worshiping the heavenly host, into worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars. It's all about deception. It's all about deception, deceiving us into worshiping the heavenly host. Read. Revelation 12 and 9. Revelation 12 and 9. Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon was thrown out, that and, servant of old, uh -huh. called the devil and Satan, uh -huh. who leads all the world astray. Who leads all the world astray. He was thrown to the earth, and his messengers were thrown out with him. Astray. The Greek word for astray is planeo. Planeo. Uh, this is where we get the word planet from. We understand that there's no such thing as planets. There are only stars. There's the sun and the moon and the stars. And so indeed, it is the, it is the stars, planeo, the so-called planets, who are leading the world, who is leading the nations astray via deception, deceiving them into worshiping the heavenly host by any means necessary. Birthdays is not the only celebration in which they are deceiving the nations into worshiping them. It's not the only celebration. Sunday worship, Easter, Christmas. We could go on and on. There are many celebrations in this society, even the 4th of July, that are geared towards deceiving us into worshiping the heavenly host. This is the name of the game. Getting us to turn our backs to Yahuwah via any means necessary 
and to worship the heavenly hosts. Read, little one. Revelation 12, 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. And another sign was seen in the heaven. Yes. And see a great fiery red dragon. Yes. Having seven heads and ten horns. Uh -huh. And seven crowns on his head. Uh -huh. And his tail draws a third of the stars and in heaven. And his tail draws a third of the stars in heaven. I told you. I have told you that this is about the worship of the heavenly host. The stars are the heavenly host. They are fallen messengers trying to deceive the world into, into uh, worshiping them and bowing down to them by any means necessary. And birthday celebration is just one more deception uh, in their armor or in, or, 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 or in their arsenal in which they use to cause men to bow down to them. Read, little one. And throws them to the earth. Mm -hmm. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. So birthday worship is based upon the position of these fallen messengers and how they impact a person's life, both at their time of birth and throughout their life. This is what it's about, about the worshiping of the heavenly host and how they impact a person's life at the time of birth and throughout their lives. You, Keep reading. You have a note difference between the one third and 33. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. So for those who don't understand, there is a difference between the third of the fallen messengers that uh, rebelled with Hashatan and the 200 watchers that came down uh, during the time of Yerod, during the time of Canute, who taught mankind astronomy, astrology, sorcery, and things that they I were not supposed to teach mankind to do. These 200 watchers, who are the fathers of the giants, who are the fathers of the Nephilim, and the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, in which we call demons, uh, these 200 watchers are now held on the chains of darkness until the day of until the day of judgment. But there are still stars. Fallen messengers who are impacting the lives of men, who are deceiving men into worshiping them, whereby transgressing Torah. And one way to do that is via the worship of them, via the celebration of birthdays, which is based upon divination, is based upon sorcery, and is based upon the position of the sun and the moon and the stars at the time of a person's birth. Read, little one. Jude 1, 3, and 13. Mm -hmm. Beloved ones, making all haste to write to you concerning our common deliverance, mm -hmm. I felt the necessity to write to you, urging you to earnestly contend for the belief, mm -hmm. which was once for all delivered to the set-apart ones. Mm -hmm. For certain men have slipped in, whose judgment was written about long ago, mm -hmm. wicked ones perverting the favor of our Elohim for mm -hmm. indecency mm -hmm. and denying the only master, Yahuwah, and our master, Yahusha Mashiach. But I intend to remind you, though you once knew this, that Yahuwah, having saved the people out of the land of Matraim, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the messengers who did not keep their own principality, uh -huh. but left their own dwelling, uh -huh. he has kept in everlasting shackles. He has kept in everlasting shackles. These are the 200 watchers that came down during the time of Canuk. But there is a one third that rebelled with Hashatan that are still wandering stars. That are still wandering stars leading the whole world astray via the worshiping of them. Keep reading. Under darkness for the judgment of the great day, mm -hmm. even as Sodom and Amora and the cities around them in a similar way to these, having given themselves over to whoring and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, undergoing judicial punishment of everlasting fire. In the same way, indeed, these dreamers defile the flesh mm -hmm. and reject authority mm -hmm. and speak evil of esteemed ones. Mm -hmm. But Makaal, the chief messenger, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Masha, presumed not to bring against him a blasphemous accusation. These esteemed ones mentioned here are the one third. We just read about the ones that are locked up until the day of judgment. These esteemed ones in which people, which you find them in the churches all the time, talking about binding principalities and, and, um, and coming against principalities ignorantly. 
not knowing what they're doing, coming against esteemed ones. Esteemed one alludes to being someone in high authority, someone uh, uh, having, uh, having a position of authority or a prince or a principality or a ruler. And so these people speaking against esteemed ones, speaking against principalities ignorantly, many of them suffering because of it. Read. But said, Yahuwah rebuke you. But these blaspheme that which they do not know. Blaspheme what they do not know. But when Mikiyal uh, contended with Hashatan for the body of Masha, he brought not an accusatory word against Hashatan, but rather said, Yahuwah rebuke you. But we have those in churches that think that they can uh, bind principalities with their ignorant behinds. Read. And that which they know naturally, like unreasoning beasts, in these they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, because they have gone in the way of Cain and gave themselves to the delusion of Balaam for reward and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are rocky reefs in your love feast, mm -hmm. feasting with you, mm -hmm. feeding themselves without fear, mm -hmm. waterless clouds mm -hmm. borne about by the winds, mm -hmm. late autumn trees without fruit, mm -hmm. twice dead, pulled up by the roots, wild waves of the sea foaming up their shame, strange stars from whom blackness of darkness is kept forever. Strange stars for which blackness of darkness is reserved forever. I told you that messengers were stars. I told you that. Abba told you that. The wish, the celebration of birthdays, which is based upon the position of the sun and the moon and the stars at, a, at the time of a person's birth, is the worship of the heavenly host. This is about deception. This is about deceiving us to bow down and worship them. Again, if you if you tell the average person, if if you say to the average person, again, let's go to the house of Tammuz on the first day of the week called Sunday and let's worship the sun, let's worship Tammuz, let's bow down to him, they will look at you like you're crazy. But if you package it up in deception, they will freely go and bow down to the heavenly host. And this is what birthday celebrations do. Read, little one. Canute 10, 6, and 18. Mm -hmm. Again, Yahuwah said to Raphael, Bind Azal, Azazal hand and foot, cast him into darkness, and opening the desert which is in Duodal, mm -hmm. cast him in there. Throw upon him hurled and pointed stones, covering him with darkness. There shall he remain forever. Cover his face that he may not see the light. And in the great day of judgment, let him be cast into the fire. Restore the earth with the with which the angels, angels have corrupted, and announce life to it that I may revive it. All the sons of men shall not perish in consequence of every secret by which the watchers have destroyed and which they have taught their offspring. All the earth has been corrupted by the effects of the teaching of Azazel. To him, therefore, ascribe the whole crime. To Gabriel also, Yahuwah said, Go to the bastards, to the reprobates, to the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, the offspring of the watchers from among men. Bring them forth and excite them one against another. Let them perish by mutual slaughter, for a length of days shall not be theirs. They shall all entreat you, but their fathers shall not obtain their wishes, wishes respecting them. For they shall hope for eternal life, that they may live, each of them, 500 years. To Mikiel, likewise, Yahuwah said, go and announce his crimes to Shimza, Shimza and to the others who are with him who have been associated with women, that they might be polluted with all their impurity. And when all their sons shall be slain, when they shall see the perdition of their beloved, bind them for 70 generations underneath the earth, even to the day of judgment and of con consummation, until the judgment, the effect of which will last forever, be completed. Then shall they be taken away into the lowest depths of the fire in torment, and in confinement shall they be shut up forever. Immediately after this shall Shemja, together with them, burn and perish. They shall be bound unto the consummation of many generations, destroy all the souls addicted to lust and the offspring of the watchers, for they have tyrannized over mankind. Barak Yahuwah. So this is the fate of the 200 watchers of messengers that came down and slept with human women and produced giants and produced giants. 
But Abba wants us to understand that messengers are stars and there's still a third of them that rebelled with Hashatan that are bent on causing mankind through deception to bow down and worship them. To bow down and worship them. This is the name of the game. To worship the heavenly host. It's always been the name of the game. It's always been about the worshiping of the heavenly host. It's always been about Hashatan exalting his throne above Yahuwah's and being worshipped as Yahuwah. It's always been about them deflecting the worship of, of Yahuwah to them. The antidote to this serpent bite, or to these serpents bite, because there's more than one serpent, the antidote to this is just to obey Torah. Torah, if we obey Torah, we will never be deceived. If we simply obey Torah, we will never be deceived. Torah, no one Torah, is it okay to celebrate birthdays? But Torah tells us not to do what the Egyptians do and not to do what the Kana'ani do. Not to lift up our eyes and look at the sun and the moon and the stars and, and, and be led astray by them and be led away to bow down and to worship them. Whereby transgressing Torah, whereby transgressing Torah and whereby making a reservation in the eternal lake of fire. Yes, the wages of crime is death. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Crime is the transgression of Torah. And they want us to die by any means necessary. And they are deceiving the whole world through the deception of birthday celebration into worshiping the host of Shamayim. Read, little one. Canuk 18. Mm -hmm. I then surveyed the receptacles of all the winds. Listen. Perceiving that they contributed to adorn the whole creation mm -hmm. and to guard the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. I surveyed the stone which supports the corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. I also beheld the four winds which bear up the earth mm -hmm. and the expanse of heaven. Mm -hmm. I beheld the winds occupying the exalted sky, mm -hmm. arising in the midst of heaven mm -hmm. and of earth, mm -hmm. and constituting the pillars of heaven. Mm -hmm. I saw the winds which turned the sky, mm -hmm. which caused the orb of the sun mm -hmm. and of all the stars to set. Whoa, which caused the orb of the sun and all the stars to set. Read. And over the earth, I saw the winds, which supports the clouds. Mm -hmm. I saw the paths of the angels. I saw the path of the messengers. I've told you that the stars are messengers. Yes, he did. He told you that they're messengers. And birthday celebration is based upon the position of the sun and the moon and the stars. The messengers who impact mankind's lives at the point of that person's birth. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We just know this. Satan is knowing. Abba's people just don't know this. We don't understand. But he sent his servant by this night to shed light on this error and to call his people out of darkness into his marvelous light, to call his people to Teshuva, to turn away from unrighteousness, back to righteousness, back to the ancient path. Barak Yahuwah. Come on, read, little one. I perceive that the extremity of the earth, the expanse of heaven above it, then I passed on towards the south, where burnt both by day and night. Six mountains formed a glorious stone, three towards the east and three towards the south. Those which were towards the east were of a very graded stone, one of which was a migrate and another anatomy. Those toward the south were of a red stone. The middle one reached to the heaven like the throne of Elohim, a throne composed of alabaster, the top of which was of sapphire. I saw to a blazing fire hanging over all the mountains, and there I saw a place on the other side of the extended territory where waters were collected. I likewise beheld terrestrial fountains deep in the fiery columns of heaven. And in the columns of, he of heaven, I beheld fires which descended without number, but neither or high nor into depth. Or those fountains also I perceived a place which had never the expanse of the heaven had above it, nor the solid ground underneath it. Neither was there water above it, nor anything on wing, but the spot was desolate. And there I beheld seven stars like great seven blazing what? mountains. Seven, seven stars, read like great blazing mountains, mm -hmm. and like Ruakuth entering 
in entreating me. Mm -hmm. And the Malachim said, or the angels, this place until the consummation of heaven and earth will be the prison of the stars and the host of the heaven. The stars which roll over fire are those which transgress the commandments of Elohim mm -hmm. before they before their time arrived. Mm -hmm. For they came not in their proper season. Uh -huh. Therefore was he offended uh -huh. with them and bound them until the period of the consummation of their crimes in the sec in the secret year. Oh, and you thought they were just stars. You thought they were just stars. See, Disney... Disney, you know, they, they give you truth in plain sight. I don't remember the words, but uh, something like, if you wish upon a star, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, they know the truth. Yes, they do. That stars are not just stars. These are messengers. Talking about fallen stars, giving you truth in plain sight. Yes, fallen stars, fallen messengers. Birthday worship is the worship of the heavenly host. It is based upon a position of the sun and the moon and the stars at the time of a person's birth. Read, little one. Canute 19, 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. Then Uriel said, Here the messengers who cohabited with women mm -hmm. appointed their leaders and assuming many forms mm -hmm. made men profane and caused them to err mm -hmm. so that they sacrificed to devils mm -hmm. as to Elohim. They caused men to err, assuming many forms, assuming many forms, Causing men to err. Yes, by deception. This is the name of the game. To cause you to err by deception, by any means necessary. Read. For in the great day of judgment, mm -hmm. with which they shall be judged mm -hmm. until they are consumed, mm -hmm. and their women also shall be judged, mm -hmm. who led astray the messengers of heaven, mm -hmm. that they might salute them. And I, Canuk, I alone saw the likeness of the end of all things, nor did any man see it as I saw it. Barak Yahuwah, read. Keep reading. Uh, Jasher. Mm -hmm. 85, 52, and 57. Let's, let's, before she gets here, she's turning to the book of Jasher. What chapter? Uh, 85, 52, and 57. Joshua 85, 52 through 57. And the backdrop to this story, while you're getting it, if you want to turn to it, Joshua 85, 52 through 57. The backdrop to this story is when our, our ancestors were in the wilderness and Muad was afraid of them. And because they were afraid of them, they called Balaam, who was a sorcerer, to curse them. To curse them because they were afraid of them. But we know the story. Balaam could not curse them. How can he say, his words were, how can I curse what Yahuwah has Barak? His words were, there is no sorcery and divination against Yaakub. There is no sorcery and divination against Yaakub. So we know the story in the book of Numbers of Bamadba. And so this is the backdrop of this story. And so because, because Balaam would not curse them, uh, he, he would not curse them, but he instead, <laughs> listen, he instead taught the Moabi, which is to say Moabites, how to cause our ancestors to curse themselves. Yes, we're talking about deception. We're talking about deception. We're talking about being deceived into worshiping the heavenly host. Indeed, I told you. If you outright told someone the truth about worshiping the heavenly host, they would think that you were crazy. But if you packaged it up and made it look nice and pretty so as to deceive, then they would bow down freely. They would bow down freely. And such is the case with our ancestors. You see, our ancestors were deceived as well. They didn't just, the people of the land didn't just say, come on, let's go worship the sun. Let's go worship the moon and the stars. It wasn't like that. They were deceived. They were deceived into doing it. The same way we are being deceived, not me. The people of the earth are being deceived now. It's all about deception. It's all about deception. And if his people would simply just obey Torah and walk the ancient path, we would never be deceived again. So this is the backdrop. Go ahead and read, little one. And when the children of Yasharel abode in the plain of Shatayim, mm -hmm. they began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Mm -hmm. And the children of Yasharel approached Moab, and mm -hmm. the children of Moab pitched their tents 
opposite to the camp of the children of Yasharel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Moab were afraid of the children of Yasharel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Moab took all their daughters and their women of beautiful aspects. Listen, listen, here's the, here, here's the cunning. Here's the deception. Listen. And dressed them in gold and silver and costly garments. And the children of Moab seated these women at the door of their tents in order that the children of Yasharel might see them and turn to them and not fight against Moab. And all the children of Moab did this thing to the children of Yasharel. And every man placed his woman and daughter at the door of his tent. And all the children of Yasharel saw the act of the children of Moab. And the children of Yasharel turned to the daughters of Moab oh, and stop. coveted see, them. See, they, they packaged it up really, really nicely really pretty so as to deceive they didn't tell them come on let's go worship by all peor that ain't what they said they they dressed their most beautiful women up very nicely in nice fine apparel and seated them at the door of the tent so as to so as to attract the attention of the sons of yasha all through deception they deceived them into worshiping and slaughtering to baal peor it's always about deception Come on, read. And it came to pass that when an Aubrey came to the door of the tent of Moab and saw a daughter of Moab and desired her in his heart and spoke with her at the door of the tent, that which he desired, while they were speaking together, the men of the tent would come out and speak to the Aubrey like unto these words. Surely you know that we are brethren. We are all descendants of Lot and the descendants of Abraham, his brother. Wherefore then will you not remain with us? Wherefore will you not eat our bread and our sacrifice? And when the children of Moab heard this, overwhelmed him with their speeches and enticed him by their flattering words, they seated him in the tent and cooked and sacrificed for him. They seated him in the tent and cooked and sacrificed to him, to Baal Peor. And they partook of the slaughtering via deception. Via deception. This is still going on. And this is the name of the game, deception. Deceiving you into worshiping the heavenly host. Yes, Baal is, uh, is part of the heavenly host. He is worshiped as the sun. This is all about the worship of the heavenly host and getting mankind to worship them by any means necessary. And the most and, 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 and the most often used method is deception. Yes, he, he is the deceiver of the whole world. He has deceived the whole world into worshiping him and to worshiping the heavenly host. Packaging it, up, packaging it up, making it look very pretty and attractive. Read. And he ate of their sacrifice and of their bread. Then they gave him wine and he drank and became intoxicated. Oh, ain't that what the whore does? Isn't that what the whore of Babylon does? She got the whole world drunk with her sorcery and her wine. Is this not what Circe does, commonly called the church? Circe being the Greek goddess of sorcery and wine. Circe being the queen of heaven. Yes, she is. Circe being the queen of heaven who has the whole world worshiping her, who has the whole world drunk with her sorcery and her wine. Yes, she does. Read. And they placed before him a beautiful damsel, uh -huh. and he did with her as he liked, uh. for he knew not what he was doing, mm -hmm. as he had drunk plentifully of wine. Oh, for he knew not what he was doing, for he had drunk plentifully of the wine of Babylon. The whole world is Babylon, and Babylon has the whole world drunk. They are drunk, they are deceived, and they don't know what they're doing. And so in birthday celebrations, which again is based upon the position of the sun and the moon and the stars, which are messengers at the time of a person's birth, is based upon divination and sorcery and it is based upon the worship of the heavenly host via deception. Via deception. Read, little one. Thus did the children of Moab to Yasharel in that place in the plain of Shataim, and the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yasharel on account of this matter, and he sent a pestilence among them, and there died of Yasharel 24,000 men. The anger of Yahuwah was kindled, and the anger of Yahuwah is kindled. And he has sent a voice crying out in the wilderness this night to call you out of darkness into his marvelous light, lest you receive his wrath. 
He is calling you out of the worship of the heavenly host via deception and calling you back to the ancient path. He's calling you back to Torah by which you, if you obey Torah, you will never be deceived again. Birthday celebration of the worship of the heavenly host. Come out of her, my people, lest you receive of her plagues and take part in her crimes. Yahoo is getting ready to unleash wrath on this earth. He is getting ready to unleash his wrath on this earth. And he's calling us to perfection. He's calling us back to the ancient path. He is calling us to be Akkad. He's calling us to be one. Read, little one. You have your own no birthday cakes. Indeed, the making of birthday cakes and candles, the making of birthday cakes, you are making those birthday cakes. You are making cakes for the queen of heaven. Yes, we're still talking about the worship of the heavenly host. You're making those cakes for the queen of heaven, Ashtara, uh, Ishtarte, Eostre. You're making that cake for the queen of heaven. When you make a wish, uh, that smoke ascends to her. You're making a wish to her. This is all about the worship of the heavenly host, worshiping them and bowing down to them by any means necessary read little one jeremiah 7 18 mm -hmm. the children are gathering wood yes the fathers are lighting the fire yes and the women are kneading their dough to yes. make cakes for the sovereignness of the heaven making cakes for the queen of heaven they don't just do it on easter every time you bake that cake for a birthday celebration which i've already established is the worship of the heavenly host you are baking a cake for the queen of heaven yes you are yes you are read and to pour out drink offerings to other mighty ones mm -hmm. to provoke me. Mm. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. There any more precepts? Psalms 119, 105. Read. Your word is a lamp unto my feet yes. and a light to my path. Yes. Barak Yahuwah. If we simply obey Torah, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, it will light our way in this world of darkness and it will keep us away from deception. It will keep us away from false light. Indeed, these fallen messengers has, have filled the earth with false light. It's not light at all. If we simply walk the path of righteousness, if we simply obey Torah, which is a lamp unto our feet, and a light into our path, which is given to us to light our way into eternity, which is given to us to keep us out of darkness, which is given to us to keep us out of deception. If we simply obey Torah, we will never be deceived again. Read. The Testament of Dan. The Testament of Dan, what she's getting ready to read here. And, and this is the understanding, Mishpaka. And this is, this is the reason. that There's two reasons for the deception. There's two reasons for deceiving us into, actually there's more than one reason, but uh, th th there's, there's, there's more than one reason for causing us to bow down and to worship the heavenly host. One is to, uh, it, it, it's to cause us to be in rebellion to Yahuwah and to cause us to worship them, to cause us to worship them. Three, it is to cause us through this rebellion and, and, and because of the worship of them to be destroyed with them. To have the apple or the pupil of his eye destroyed with them, with them. But the most important reason for the deception, Mashpaka, is that if they can continue to deceive us, they can prolong their judgment. Because they understand that the day, that the moment Yahshua all repents and comes back to Torah and comes back to the ancient path, the moment, the day that this happens, the reign of the adversary will end. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. When we become our kind and return back to Torah, the reign of the adversary will end. Read. Draw near unto Alua and unto the messenger that intercedeth for you. For he is a mediator between Alua and man. And for the shalom of Yasharel, he shall stand up against the reign of the enemy. 
Therefore is the enemy eager to destroy all that call upon Yahuwah. For he knoweth that upon the day on which Yasharel shall repent, the reign of the enemy shall be brought to an end. On the day that Yasharel Tashuba repents and turns back to Torah, the true light, his reign will end. Read. Dabraim 30, 1 and 7. And it shall be when all these words come upon you, the Barakai and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the nations where Yahuwah, your Alua drives you and shall turn back to Yahuwah, your Alua. And shall Tashuba turn back, repent to Yahuwah, your Alua, read. And obey his voice mm -hmm. according to all that I command you today. Uh -huh. With all your heart, uh -huh. with all your being, uh -huh. you and your children. Uh -huh. Then Yahuwah, your Alua. Then, Alua, then Yahuwah, your Alua will. Shall turn back your captivity. Shall turn back your captivity. Do you not understand when the captivity is turned back? That this is when the thousand year reign will be ushered in and his reign, the adversary's reign will end? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Read. And shall have compassion on you, and he shall turn back and gather you from all the peoples where Yahuwah, your Alua, has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under the Shamaim, from there Yahuwah, your Alua, does gather you, and from there he does take you. And Yahuwah, your Alua, shall bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, possess, and you shall possess it. And he shall do good to you and increase you more than your fathers. And Yahuwah, your Alua, shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yahuwah, your Alua, with all your heart, with all your being, so that you might live. And Yahuwah, your Alua, shall put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted, it, persecuted you. The name of the game is deception because he knows through deception, if he can deceive us into bowing down and worshiping the heavenly host, he can continue his reign of the earth. But the minute the deception is removed, when we turn back to Torah, his reign will end. His reign will end. And one of the deceptions that Abba has sent me by to uncover tonight is birthday worship, which is the worship of the sun and the moon and the stars. It is the worship of... It is the worship of the heavenly host. Do I have any more precepts? Jubilees 10, 1 through 13. Read. Jubilees 10, 1 through 13. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean devils begin to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah. This is the name of the game, to lead astray, to deceive. To deceive, read. And to make to err and destroy them. Mm -hmm. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the devils which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his sons. Mm -hmm. sons. And he prayed before Yahuwah Alua and said, Allahim of the Rukhus of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me and have saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, and has not caused me to perish as you did the sons of perdition. For your favor has been great towards me, and great has been your mercy to my soul. Let your favor be left upon my sons, and let not wicked Rukus rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. Uh -huh. But do you bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And you know how your watchers, the fathers of those rural coasts, acted in my day. And as for these rural coasts which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation. And let them not bring destruction on the sons of the servant, of your servant, my Allahim. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. And let them not rule over the rural coasts of the living. For you alone can exercise dominion over them, and let them not have power over the sons of the righteous, of the righteous from henceforth and forevermore. And Yahuwah Eloheinu bade us to bind all. And the chiefs of the Ruachos, Mastima, came and said, Yahuwah Creator, let some of them remain before me, and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I say, that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. 
for great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before him and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Nuach all their medicines, for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness, nor strive in righteousness. And we did according to all his words, all the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation, and a tenth part of them we left that they might be subject before Satan, Hashatan, on the earth. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases, together with their seductions, how he might heal them with herbs of the earth. And Noah wrote down all things in a safar as we instructed him concerning every kind of medicine. Thus the evil rookus were precluded from hurting the sons of Noah. Thus the evil rookus were precluded from hurting the sons of Noah. Here's another, here's another issue here. Again, the name of the game is deception. And so again, if they can deceive you into worshiping them, then they have power over you. They have authority over you. They have a legal right to afflict you if they can deceive you into worshiping them. If you simply obey Torah, if you just simply obey Torah, then they have no legal right to afflict us. They have no legal right. Anything that happens, Abba must allow it. They have no right. If we simply obey the Torah, the name of the game is deception. And another reason for the deception to get us to worship them is so that they can afflict us. Is so that they can afflict the sons of men by any means necessary through birthday worship, through Sunday worship, through Easter, through, through whatever, through whatever they're doing in Egypt that is contrary to Torah. They use deception so that they can afflict us. Read, what's the next precept? Revelation 9, 1 and 11. Mm -hmm. And the fifth Wait. And they also, listen, here, here's, here's something that we need to consider as well. They're also, the deception is also because if they can get, if they can deceive us into worshiping them, not only do, will that give them a, a legal right to afflict us, but what they are doing are creating hosts. They are creating hosts. If we obey them, if we bow down to them, if we bow down to the heavenly host, if we bow down to demons, then we are giving them a legal right to inhabit us. And we are in the season, we are in the end times, as, as, as my Ash, my Isha just read in Jubilees 10 about a, a, a ninth part of the demons that were locked up in the pit. A ninth part of them that were locked up in the pit, but that are going to be unleashed during the end times, they're going to be unleashed shortly. When these demons come up out of the pit and they come upon the earth, the whole earth that has been deceived into worshiping the heavenly host and who has been deceived into bowing down to demons, there is going to be mass possessions all over the earth because they have, they have in their deception created perfect hosts. Yes, they have. They have created perfect hosts. Oh, it looks, it looks innocent. Birthday worship looks innocent, but they are creating a host because you are bowing down to the host of Shamayim. Read. And the fifth messenger sounded, and I saw a star from the heaven which had fallen to the earth. A star. And mm -hmm. the key to the pit of the deep was given to him. Mm -hmm. And he opened the pit of the deep and smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. Mm -hmm. And the sun was darkened. Also the air because of the smoke of the pit mm -hmm. and out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth mm -hmm. and authority was given to them as the scorpions of the earth possesses authority. Mm -hmm. And it was said to them that they shall not harm the grass of the earth or any green matter or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of Elohim upon their foreheads. Mm -hmm. And it was given to them that they should not kill them, but to torture them for five months. Mm -hmm. And their torture was like the torture of a scorpion when it stings a man. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it. They shall long to die, but death shall flee from them. And the locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. And on their heads were crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. And they had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like the breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots of many horses 
running into battle and they have tails like scorpions and sting and in their tails is the authority to harm men five months and they have over them a sovereign the messenger of the pit of the deep whose name in hebrew is abadun abadun destruction Ab he mm -hmm. is a destroyer mm -hmm. but in greek he is he has the name apollyon apollyon a star was cast down a star was cast down. Now, in, in, in at Jubilees 10, we understand who that star is. He is Hashatan, who is going to be cast down with the key to the pit to unlock it. And those names of the devils that have been locked up are going to have authority here shortly in these end times to harm those who have been deceived into bowing down and worshiping the heavenly host. Yes, they creating hopes. They creating hopes under an in under an innocent package, uh, something innocent like birthday worship. It's not limited to birthday worship, but this is just an example. The name of the game is deception to cause us to bow down and worship them so that they will have authority over us. And so Abadun, the destroyer, was cast down with the key to open up the pit. And to allow these demons to come up the name to harm men, those who have been deceived into worshiping the heavenly host. Read. Ubilee 48. Mm -hmm. And in the sixth year of the third week of the 49th Jubilee, uh -huh. you did depart and dwell in the land of Midian. Mm -hmm. Five weeks in one year. Mm -hmm. And you did return into Matraim in the second week, mm -hmm. in the second year, in mm -hmm. the 50th Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And you yourself know what he spoke unto you on Mount Sinai and what Prince Mastima desired to do with you mm -hmm. when you were returning into Matraim. Mm -hmm. Did he not with all his power seek to slay you and deliver the Matraim out of your hand when he saw that you were sent to execute judgment and vengeance on the Matraim? Mm -hmm. And I delivered you out of his hands. And you did perform the signs and wonders which you were sent to perform in Matraim against Para mm -hmm. and against all his house mm -hmm. and against his servants and his people. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah executed a great vengeance on them for Yasharel's sake and smote them through the plagues of blood and frogs, lice, and dog flies, and malignant boils, breaking forth in blains, and their cattle by death and by hailstones. Thereby he destroyed everything that grew for them, and by locusts which devoured the rem remnant, remnant I'm sorry, which had been left by the hail, and by darkness and by the death of the firstborn of men and animals, and on all those and on all their idols, Yahuwah took vengeance and burned them with fire. And everything was sent through your hand that you should declare these things before they were done. And you did speak with the sovereign of Matraim before all his servants and before his people. And everything took place according to your words. Ten great and terrible judgments came on the land of Matraim that you might execute vengeance on it for Yasharel. And Yahuwah did everything for Yasharel's sake and according to his covenant which he ordained with Abraham that he would take vengeance on them as they had brought them by force into bondage. And the prince Mastima stood up against you and sought to cast you into the hands of Parah. And he helped the Mitzri sorcerers, and they stood up and wrought before you the evils indeed we permitted them to work. But the remedies we did not allow to be wrought by their hands. And Yahuwah smote them with malignant ulcers, and they were not able to stand, for we destroyed them so that they could not perform a single sign. And notwithstanding all these signs and wonders, the prince Mastima was not put to shame because he took courage and cried to the to the Mitzrayim to pursue after you with all the powers of the Mitzrayim, with all their chariots and with their horses, and with all the hosts of the people of Mitzrayim. And I stood between the Mitzrayim and Yasharel, and we delivered Yasharel out of his hand and out of the hand of his people. And Yahuwah brought them through the midst of the sea as if it were dry land. And all the people whom he brought to pursue after Yasharel, Yahuwah Eloheinu, cast them into the midst of the sea, into the depths of the abyss beneath the children of Yasharel. Even as the people of Masraim had cast their children into the river, he took vengeance on one million of them, and one thousand strong and energetic men were destroyed on account of one suckling of the children of your people, which they had thrown into the river. And on the 14th day, and on the 15th day, and on the 16th day, and on the 17th day, and on the 18th, 
the Prince Mustima was bound and imprisoned behind the children of Yasharel that he might not accuse them. And on the 19th, we let them loose that they might help the Mitz Mitzrayim, Mitzri Mitzrayim and pursue the children of Yasharel. And he hardened their hearts and made them stubborn. And the device was devised by Yahuwah Eloheinu that he might smite the Mitzrayim and cast them into the sea. And on the 14th, we bound him that he might not accuse the children of Yasharel on the day when they asked the Matraim for vessels and garments, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of bronze in order to despoil the Mitzrayim in return for the bondage in which they had forced them to serve. And we did not lead forth the children of Yasharel from Mitzrayim empty-handed. Read. Uh, Jubilees 49, 1-6. Remember the commandment which Yahuwah commanded you concerning the Pesach, that you should, should celebrate it in its season on the 14th of the first month, that you should kill it before it is evening, and that they should eat it by night on the evening of the 15th from the time of the setting of the sun. For on this night, the beginning of the feast and the beginning of the joy, ye were eating the Pesach in Masraim, when all the powers of Mastima had been let loose to slay all the firstborn in the land of Misraim, from the firstborn of Parah to the firstborn of the captive maidservant in the meal and to the cattle. And this is the sign which Yahuwah gave them into every house on the lentils of which they saw the blood of a lamb of the first year into their house they should not enter to slay, but should pass by it by it all. <laughs> But shall pass by it that all those should be saved that were in the house, because the sign of the blood was on its lentils. And the powers of Yahuwah did everything according as Yahuwah commanded them. And they passed by all the children of Yasharel. And the plague came not upon them to destroy from amongst them any soul, either of cattle or man or dog. And the plague was very grievous in Masraim. And there was no house in Masraim where there was not one dead and weeping and, and lamentation. And all the Yasharel were eating the flesh of the Pesach lamb and drinking the wine and was lauding and blessing and giving giving thanks to Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers and was ready to go forth from under the yoke of Matraim from the evil bondage. Hashatan is the destroyer. He is the destroyer. Mastama, Mastema is the destroyer. He is Abadum, which means destruction or destroyer. Hashatan is the destroyer. And he only has authority over those who what? Who bow down and worship him. He does not have authority over those who do not bow down and worship him. He is the messenger, the star, in accordance with Revelation 12. When he is going to be cast down to the earth, he is going to be cast down with the key to the bottomless pit, and he's going to let those that one knife of demons up out of the pit. And they are not, they are even not going to be able to harm anybody except those who bow down and do what? And worship the heavenly host. This is the name of the game. Creating hopes. Creating hopes by any means necessary, inclusive of something as innocent as a birthday celebration. They are coming up to afflict those who bow down to worship the heavenly host. And the destroyer who, who destroyed the firstborn of Egypt, he destroyed them because he had authority over them, because they worshiped him. They served him. He could not touch those who do not serve him, who do not bow down to worship the heavenly host. This is what it's about deceiving us to worship the heavenly host so that they can destroy the pupil of his eye. Read. Exodus 12, 21 and 24. Yes, he is the destroyer. Read. And Masha called for all the elders of Yasharel and said to them, go out and take lambs for yourselves according to your clan and slay the Pesach. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And you, none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. And Yahuwah shall pass on to smite the Mitzrites and shall see the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost. And Yahuwah shall pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to the come who? into your the destroyer. The who? The destroyer. Read to come into your houses to smite you, and you shall guard this word as a law for you and your sons forever. Now in Jubilees, we just we just understood that the destroyer is Hashatan. Hashatan is that star, is that great red dragon in Revelation 12 that's going to be thrown down to the earth with the keys to the bottomless pit. 
who only has power and authority over those who bow down and worship him, over those who bow down and worship the heavenly host, inclusive of birthday celebration. This is the name of the game. This is the name of the game. But Abba is calling his people out of darkness into his marvelous light, back to the ancient path in truth without turning to the right or to the left. Barak Yahuwah. Do I have any more precepts, little one? Romans 8, 1 and 14. Anything after that? Let me skip. 2 Baruch 27, 1 through 15. Anything after that? Uh, uh, Revelation 18, 1 and 4. We're going to stop right here. We're going to stop right here. The hour is already late. Uh, I've already made the point. There's a couple more precepts to be read, but uh, the hour is already late. And I think Abba has already made his point about how our birthday celebration is predicated on the worship of the heavenly host. It is evil. Uh, and they, uh, they have deceived the whole world into worshiping them. Uh, they have deceived the whole world into becoming hosts so that they can afflict them. And so when these end times come, the destroyer will have authority over them. So I pray that Abba's word has sunk down deep. I pray that it is sunk down deep in the heart and in the fosh of your people. I pray that not a single word, not a single seed was cast by the wayside. Not a single seed fell on stony ground and not a single seed fell amongst thorns. But that this seed that was spoken tonight and that was scattered by your servant was thrown upon fertile, fertile, fertilized soil. Such that uh, the Ruach will come along and water that seed. Yes. Such that it will grow up to produce, to grow up to be a mighty tree, producing the fruit that leads to everlasting life. I pray that, that your word uh, will not return void to you, but that every single word spoken through the mouth of your servant will accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. In the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach, so be it, so be it. So be it. So be it. Barak Yahuwah. Barak. To the 